Well, good morning. Good morning. Okay, we're going to try that again. Good morning. Hey, that's it. We're so glad that you're here with us this morning, worshiping the Lord with us. If you're joining us online or in person for the very first time, we're so glad that you're here with us. We want to invite you to text WELCOME to 301-900-2920. It's a chance for you to get to know us. You can ask us questions. We won't spam you. We promise. If, you're, if you would like to ask us questions, text WELCOME to 301-900-2920. All right, church. I want to invite you to stand and worship the Lord with us this morning and worship in song. I pray that you come with great expectancy to meet with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords today. I say that, I say that because I grew up in church and I would go to church every Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, whenever the doors were open and it would become mundane for me. But when you come with an expectant heart to meet with the divine, it's just a different posture. It's just a different expectation. The Lord does something with that. So I pray that you come with great expectancy to meet with the King of Kings and Lord of Lords today. All right, here we go. You won, you won, you won, you've already won. You 
victory. You won, you won, you won, you already won. And I'm not moved by what I see. Your hand is moving. I know you're using this. I live to sing your victory. Cause you're gonna get the glory. 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 You're gonna get the glory out of this. Yes, you're gonna get the glory, Lord. Yes. He's gonna get the glory. He is going to get the glory. Amen. Amen. Yes, Romans 8.28 says that, that everything is going to work out for our good. For those who are called according to his purposes. So I want to invite you. I want to invite you into a time of lament. Now, lament doesn't mean to... to uh, the labor, the hard things that are that are happening in our life, but it just means to acknowledge it. Like we're gonna acknowledge our reality. Whatever your reality is today, whether it's you're looking for a job, you're you're not doing well health-wise, your family's going through struggles, whatever your reality is, I want you to acknowledge it this morning. Just take a moment for that. Next, I want us to move into a time of acknowledging the truths of God. So if you're in the chat, you're watching us online, I want you to type in what is a truth of God that you are holding on to while you're walking out your reality today. For me, it's that he is a God that I can trust. He is a God I can hold on to because he's sovereign. He knows things that I don't know. This next song, it's called Even Though. So even though the waters that I see right now are real, God, your presence is more real. Even though the wilderness that I'm facing right now is real, God, your presence is more real. The giants that I'm facing today may be real, but the presence of the Lord is more real. The battles that I might be, that might be raging on are real, but the presence of the Lord is more real. is more real this wilderness I'm feeling right now is real but your presence is more real this water that I'm seeing right now is real but your presence is more real this wilderness I'm feeling right now is real, but your presence is more real. Even though it doesn't make 
lights and still you were God over all my senses. God, your presence is more real. Even though it doesn't make sense, still you are God over all my senses. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. Yes, Lord. I want to 
want you to remember when we talked about the beginning of at the beginning of this song, what your reality is. Your present reality is. I want you to sing and declare, God, your presence is still more real than that. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. Even in the hardships, God, your presence is more real. Even when it don't make sense, God, your presence is more real. Even when I'm overwhelmed by my reality, God, your presence is more real. Yes, God, your presence is more real. Declare that over yourself today. God, your presence is more real. God, your presence is more real. Thank you, Lord, that you are a God that we can cling to. A God who invites us into intimate relationship with you. We can come into your lap. And you are a God that we can trust with our present reality. The doubts that we may be facing, our relationships that may be, um, let's just say trash. God, we're putting it in your hands. Our child, our children, we're putting them in your hands, Lord. Our finances, we're putting those things in your hands, Lord. And in what a sweet, sweet place it is, Lord, to trust you with those things. To stand on your promises, God. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same
we thank you. We thank you that even when it doesn't make sense, even as we're walking through the blazing fires, even as we're walking through this life, this journey, and things are just difficult, we can trust you. You are a God that we can hold to. We thank you, God, that you are sovereign. We thank you, God, that you are all powerful. God, we thank you, God, that you are a God who is present with us in the midst of it all. Give us grace, Lord, to trust you more. All this we pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. But when you give to the needy, do not let your le left hand know what your right hand is doing. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who says what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans. For they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of truth. Let's pray. Father, we, um, we listen to your words. We sing our songs. And this morning we bring ourselves um, how we are, where we are, with our fears and anxieties challenges, hopes and dreams, gifts, hang-ups. God, we uh, believe that you are here in this place as you are in all places. God, meet us here. Meet us where we are, bring healing and strength where needed, bring wisdom and insight, and um, bring the transforming work of your spirit. Change us, God, into who you made us and call us to be. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. It is good to see you this morning. If you're with us on uh, our live stream, thank you for joining us and being a part of what's happening here. Um, I see that you all have your Halloween masks on, so good for you. Um, and um, 
We are in this series called Soul Food. Uh, some of you were here last week, and you might recall that I uh, had some props and some food. I brought some of them back. I thought for sure someone would run off with my snacks, uh, but last week, but they are uh, still here. So, and if you remember these, the Oreos, the Cheetos, is it making you hungry? So, uh, like, and if you're just joining us today for the first time, like, the, you kind of have to listen to last week to, to understand where these came from. All that to say, if this was your meal, um, and we talked about this last week as well, there might come a point at which you're, I'm getting a little bit of ring back up here. I don't know if you can hear that. Maybe see if we can tweak that thing out a little bit. Um, there might come a point where you, your body says, no, I like, I, I want something better. I want some better food. You know what I'm talking about? You ever been there? And so uh, in that moment, then the question is, well, what, what am I going to eat? What am I going to make? Now, maybe like me, you have, um, you've seen these wonderful uh, pictures of uh, meals that somebody has carefully prepared. You see them on social media. Ever, and have, you, have you ever seen that? Some of you have probably posted those there, right? Uh, let me show you. Here's an example. Let's put this picture up here. Like, look at this. Like, this is, this is a, a friend of ours, actually somebody who goes here to Seneca Creek, was out visiting, and that's cheesecake with cho a chocolate lobster on the plate. Now, does that look like a delicious dessert? But, but here's the question. Like, are you going to go home and make that? I'm not going to go home. Like, I, I don't have the skills. I don't have the time. I don't have the raw materials. Like, that's, that's beyond. That, that's a wonderful thing. And, and you can get rid of that picture before it makes us drool, right? Uh, that's a wonderful thing. But the reality is we're, that doesn't work for us on a day-to-day -day basis. What we need to do is to be able to go to our pantry and pull out some basic ingredients in order to work with. I'm going to tie this into the, the message series in just a minute. You're wondering where I'm going. So, um, so if, if the Cheetos and the Oreos aren't going to get it and we have to work with some basic ingredients, we might pull out things like a little bit of oil, maybe some eggs. Um, I found this on a list somewhere on the Internet. These are the basic things you're supposed to have in your pantry. So if you didn't know this, now you know. Uh, lemons. I didn't realize those were important. But there's lemons, a can of beans. I don't know why, uh, but they said have a can of beans, some onions, um, some broth. So we have broth too. I guess maybe you can make all kinds of things. And of course, right, sugar. No pantry would be complete without sugar and flour. Yes. Sorry. Oreos have to go. Just some basic ingredients, right, with which you can begin to prepare a regular, ordinary meal that's going to meet your needs. Are you with me so far? But this is not a series on nutrition. This is a series on soul food. And I, and I want us to understand there's sometimes some very strong connections between these. So take this whole idea of the, the social media carefully arranged and filtered Instagram meal. Sometimes I think that happens with soul food. Let me give you an example. So maybe you know someone or you see or hear or read about someone, right, who has posted, so to speak, their soul food. They take a 12-month sabbatical from their work, and they travel across the country, and they visit all these beautiful sites, and they're caught up in the wonder of God's creation, and they're able to spend time every day walking and reflecting, and they maybe write a journal, and they maybe write a book about it, and how this changes their life. And like they've, you know, they met God in all of these different places. And then you and I are like, yeah, well, see, my boss has a problem if I don't show up for 12 months in a row. So that doesn't work for me. That's like, that's a great Instagram soul food thing, but it isn't going to help me. Or here's another example, right? Maybe somebody uh, that you know about or hear about has this beautiful backyard with, uh, you know, the, the, the koi pond and the uh, 
the songbirds and the aromatic flowers, and they're able to go out there and connect with God, and it's this peaceful environment, and you look out the back window and you realize you live in an apartment, you don't have a backyard. Or you live in a little townhouse and your neighbor's yard backs up to yours and it's noisy. And in fact, the only thing back there is stuff that the dog left for you, right? And so it's like, that's not going to work for me either. Or maybe somebody posts their soul food snapshot and talks about how every day they're able to Take 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening and quiet, peaceful reflection. They can read God's word and just how it nourishes them. And then you realize you have toddlers in the house and little kids and you can't get 30 seconds of peace even when you close and lock yourself in the bathroom. Am I talking to anybody here? And you realize like those... Those wonderful snapshots of soul food, like, that would be great, but that isn't going to help me on a daily basis. Like, okay, maybe I can do that on vacation, but what do I do the rest of the, the, rest of the year? And so I want to suggest that maybe we have to do, like we do here, is we go to the pantry, the soul food pantry, and we try to find some basic ingredients that we can work with. So, what does that look like? What are those basic ingredients? And here's, here's what I want to start with today, right? The ingredients, the basic ingredients of soul food are simple and available. Just like a uh, simple and, I should say available. All right, well, just trust me on that. That's what I wrote. Um, that's what it says on my notes. Uh, they're simple and available. Like, like, like they're available for anyone. And I'm, and I'm not just making this up. This isn't like pastor talk that nobody else, right? I'm not like blowing smoke or anything. Here's an example. I'll, I'll, I'll quote Jesus himself, right? In John chapter 6, verse 35. Here's what Jesus says. I am the bread of life. This might sound familiar if you were here last week, right? I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. He's talking here about soul food, and he says, anybody that comes to me, they're not going to be hungry or thirsty. So Jesus throws open the invitation, which is why I say these ingredients are simple and available. Like anybody, anybody can open the pantry of their soul food and find these kind of basic ingredients. So a little while ago, Tim and Tiwa came up and read a, a couple passages from Scripture. Maybe you recognized some of those. They read a passage from Deuteronomy where, where God instructs His people to take His Word and weave it into their life and understand it and wrestle with it and put it in places where it's going to be, you know, in front of them throughout the day, God's Word. And then we heard Jesus talk about when you give and when you pray. By the way, that's where the Lord's Prayer gets inserted. And when you fast. And so Jesus is saying, hey, the assumption is these are just like, this is the, the flour and the sugar and the oil and the eggs that is in everybody's pantry. And then the last passage where Paul talks about, yeah, take God's word and, and make sure that you, that you study, that you learn it and you understand it enough to handle it well. In other words, the, they're talking here about basic, simple ingredients of soul food. These instructions, these ingredients, so to speak, really form the foundation of how followers of Jesus have learned how to put together soul food from the very beginning. So, I want to talk a little bit about uh, what these ingredients are. Another word that we use for these is spiritual practices or spiritual disciplines, but most of us don't like discipline, so we use the word spiritual practices, right? Um, and, and the idea behind these kinds of things, and we'll talk about a few more of them in a minute. The idea behind these is that this is how we access and, and really engage in soul food. And you might ask yourself, well, how does that work, Pastor Mark? Well, it works like this, that 
that these practices uh, create space in our lives, in our minds, in our hearts, in our soul. They create room for God to actually show up in all of the other crazy, busy stuff of our life. That when we engage in these spiritual practices, when we open the pantry of soul food and we start to pull these things out and put them together, we create space for God to show up in our lives. And when God shows up, when Jesus shows up in our life, guess what? That's the bread of life. That's the living water that Jesus promises. It's like, okay, so now God's here. Now I can begin to benefit from what Jesus said is available to all of us. So that's the value of these kinds of practices. They're simple. They're available. There's been a lot of things written. We've talked about them here many, many times. Um, there are resources that I actually put on my blog site, marktindle.com. If you're watching online, you can, you can go there and check it out. Uh, do it here online if you want. Uh, I actually reached out to uh, many of our staff. I said, hey, what are some of the resources that have helped you uh, in terms of accessing God and, and, and really building this soul food? So you'll see from a number of our different staff some of the resources that they are currently finding to be helpful. You can check that out anytime. We'll leave it up there. Just go to marktindle.com and click on Weekend Resources, and you'll see it listed there right at the top of that page. Um, they're simple. They're available. And um, the, the, the kinds of things that we're talking about, uh, these practices, fall into one of two categories. Um, practices of engagement things that we do, and practices of abstinence, things that we abstain from doing. So we're going to do a little quiz here. Are you good for this? A little call and response. So uh, we're going to walk through these, and you're going to tell me whether these are um, practices of abstinence or practices of engagement. And if you're um, following online, you can type into the, uh, the chat section if you want. So we'll start at the top. Meditation. Is that engagement or abstinence? Engagement. See, I knew you were a smart group. If I can just get my... There we go. We're going to move that over. How about worship? Abstinence. See, you guys are smart. All right. Chastity. Abstinence. <laughs> Somebody's like, what is that? Confession. All right. See, you're getting the hang of this. Uh, frugality. Uh huh. Don't talk about that when Christmas is coming, right? Uh, we'll get but we'll get to that. We have a Christmas series come up. This going to be interesting. Prayer. Engagement. Engagement. Fasting. All right. Study. Silence. Service and solitude. Now, this is just a small list, okay? There are other activities that could fall into this category of spiritual practices. Um, it's almost like an infinite variety. Like you could go to the grocery store. You could find all kinds of ingredients you could put into your pantry, Right? So there's an infinite variety. Uh, Dallas Willard, who wrote and lived so much of this reality, at one point he said, you know, as an example of a spiritual practice that we might not often think about, he says, for those who are used to the, quote, better things in life, try to do grocery shopping, banking, and other business in the poorer areas of the city. This has an immense effect on our understanding and behavior toward our neighbors, both rich and poor, and our understanding of what it is to love and care for our fellow human beings. And I would suggest that in those moments, if someone adopts a practice like that, God begins to show up. And our soul begins to be nourished in unique ways. That's just one example. Very creative, right? So let me ask you this. When was the last time that you went to the pantry and opened it up and began to pull out some ingredients for soul food? Forget the Cheetos. Forget the Oreos, right? 
it's time to start cooking, start preparing. So here's, here's something else to keep in mind. Not only is it uh, available and simple, but soul food, uh, the ingredients are available and simple. Soul food comes in a variety of different forms. Let me give an example. How many of you like barbecue? If you're watching online, you like barbecue? Okay, now here's the question. What kind of barbecue? So what kinds of barbecue are there? Texas barbecue? Kansas City barbecue? Carolina barbecue? Memphis barbecue? You start going through the list, you realize, oh, well, like, the people from Texas, they don't like Carolina barbecue and vice versa, right? They're like, that's fighting words for them, right? So, so we realize that there's, there's so much variety, even when we're talking about physical food. The same thing is true when it comes to soul food, isn't it? There's a lot of variety. Here's a crazy example. So think about fasting. And most of us think, well, fasting is fasting. It's not eating. If you're fasting, you're not eating. If you're eating, you're not fasting, right? I mean, that's kind of what we think. Mm, sort of. Like, that's one form of fasting. Here's another form. I didn't make this up. This is from Scripture, all right? So Isaiah chapter 58, verses 6 and following. This is God speaking. And he's really laying into the nation of Israel for misunderstanding everything that they're supposed to be doing. Is this not the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free and break every yoke? Is it not to share your food with the hungry and provide... See, now, you didn't realize sharing your food with the hungry is a form of fasting. Now, I realize God is, is really deep into what's going on, but it just helps reshape our understanding. Provide the poor wanderer with shelter when you see the naked to clothe them, not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. Catch this now. Here's what's interesting. This connection between these spiritual practices and God showing up in our lives then your light will break forth by, like the dawn. Your healing will quickly appear. Your righteousness will go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you will call and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, here am I. So a couple things to notice, right? First, fasting comes in a variety of different forms. And then God says, by the way, when you're engaged in this, I'm going to be in front of you and behind you. I'm going to be with you all the way. Remember, that's the promise that the bread of life, the living water, is going to be present in our lives. That's the soul food that we're looking for. And it comes in a variety of forms. Here's another example. Take prayer. Like, what does prayer look like? Well, well, from our own lives, uh, from the pages of Scripture, we realize it comes in a bewildering variety of forms. Right? Prayer could be memorized. It could be written. It could be extemporaneous. It could be whispered. It could be spoken aloud. It could be spoken individually. It could be prayed together as a group. It could even be sung. It could be short. It could be long. It could be simple or innate or accusatory or inquisitory or even earlier, right, Nikki was encouraging us to lament, and that's a form of prayer. It could be filled with words. It could be filled with silence. Like all of these and more are different forms of prayer. So soul food comes in so many different forms that we oftentimes think it's just this one form. Now I can imagine, because I look at my own life, and I could imagine somebody's listening, watching, and saying, yeah, Pastor Mark, that's great. But you know, I tried that. I tried it a while ago. I tried it last year, last week. I tried it a couple times. And guess what? Nothing happened. Like there was no light bulb that went on. There was no magic moment in my life. And I would just say, or if, if, that's, if that's your challenge, if that's where you are, I'm going to encourage you to join us next week when we're talking specifically about that in a message called The Slow Simmer. Uh, so we're going to get to that, but we, we won't get to that today. But we are coming back to that challenge, right? Uh, let me ask you this. If you had to go to the pantry and put something together to form a meal 
that you would enjoy, what's the first thing that you would probably do that you would make? What's the food that comes to mind? What is it that you're most likely to make? And I want you to take that idea, that thought, that answer, and I want you to find somebody here that you didn't drive here with and tell them what your favorite food would be if you were to go into your pantry and make it. I'll wait. If you're online, you can put it on the chat section. Go ahead. Take a minute. Find somebody. Tell them what that is. All right, so here's the question, right? Did, 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 they, did they pick the same food that you did? They probably did not, right? Now, so you heard somebody else's idea of what they would make. Chances are, if you had to, you could eat that, but it might not be your preferred style, right? You might not prefer to eat whatever they found in the back of their fridge or whatever it is that they're going to make, right? Um, here's the thing. I, I, I want to I walk briefly through different kinds of food that we might prepare if we're going to the soul food pantry, so to speak. Like, take the same ingredients, but they, they, they get assembled in different ways, right? Like, you could take these things, and you could make pancakes or scones or bread or omelets or all kinds of things, right? So we've talked through this several times in the past at Seneca Creek. I just want to walk through them briefly because these are some of the different forms and the different ways that we take these ingredients and we make them work based on who we are and our own unique personality, how God has put us together. So I'm going to walk through these real briefly. I'm going to read them out, okay? And just see if one or more of these doesn't sound like you. And the whole point is to say, like, you're not going to be like everybody else, right? Your soul food doesn't have to look like the person's next to you. So here's some examples. This is from Gary Thomas's work. So he talks about this in his book, Sacred Pathways. He talks about, right, the different varieties of soul food. The intellectual, the intellectual. If this is who you are, right, you look forward to teaching parts of things like this. You're inclined to do research and, and learn about issues. Your heart is stirred when your mind is engaged. You're driven by ideas, not emotions. You feel connected to God when theological truth is clearly explained. You often read books or articles to help you deal with a problem. And if you, and if you like that, like if you're brave enough, hold up your hand and look around the room because there's other people like you, but realize not everybody's holding up their hand. Okay, so let me move on to the next one. This is the relational, right? There's a relational personality, right? This person is wired for people. You never met a small group you didn't like. You answer telemarketers. You ask them how your day, their day is going. You find that God speaks to you through other people. Spending too much time alone drains you of energy. How many of you feel like that's how I connect with God? Through other people? Raise your hand up. Look around. Yeah, you're going to connect afterwards. I can tell, right? You probably already know each other, okay? Then there's the serving type, right? This person gets distracted when the details haven't been taken care of. You enjoy working behind the scenes. You have strength to care for others even when you're tired. You may have trouble just sitting still. You experience God most when you're extending His love to others in some way. How many of you feel like they're probably standing in the back right now, right? Because they can't sit down, right? So raise your hand if you feel like, look around the room like there are other people like you. You're not weird. You're not broken. You're not wrong. You're just different. Okay, this is how we connect to God in ways like this. Here's another one, the worship, right? You look forward to the music. You may secretly wonder why the preacher thinks he has, what he has to say is so important that we can't just do more songs of the whole time, right? Uh, your problems seem to fade away when you're in this music worship mode. God opens your heart during those times. How many of you feel like that's who you are, right? Some of you look around, uh, look around the room. Again, see, see that, that's that's one way, right? That's one kind of barbecue. That's one kind of pizza. Like, that's one kind of soul food. Here's another one. The activist, right? This person comes alive to a challenge. When you hear somebody say, that can't be done, your first thought is, nothing is impossible with God. Haven't you read that? This, the, the needs around you awaken an unstoppable desire to move heaven and earth and meet those needs. You get frustrated with people who don't seem to care about injustice, and you experience God's presence as you pour yourself into a worthy cause. How many of you feel like that's who you are, right? 
Yeah, there's not a lot, right? You're like, well, okay, where's my people? Look around, right, and recognize, okay, that's part of the reason you're frustrated because people aren't like you, right? Then there's the contemplative. who pro They probably won't raise their hand, but this person <laughs> craves extended times of being alone. Other people might think you're a hermit, and you may just wonder how they can expect to hear God's voice with all the noise of life. You might feel guilty for getting so much joy out of solitude. You find deep joy and connection with God when you can get free of distractions. You may have a great capacity for prayer. You might even be willing to raise your hand, although probably not. Yeah, I didn't think so. Okay. And then finally, the creation person, right? This person longs to go for a long walk when they're faced with a difficult decision. You get a spiritual buzz out of a beautiful sunset. Your five senses often point your heart toward God, and your connection to God is very real when you observe His creation. Any people like that out here? Some of you? Yeah, okay. I see some of you have been raising your hand a lot, so that's okay, right? You can have more than one, right? You can learn how to eat all these different varieties of soul food. Each of these pathways is a legitimate way to connect with God, to bring the bread of life, the living water, into your daily life, right? There's nothing wrong with a Thanksgiving meal with all of its grandeur, but there's a reason we don't do that every day. We don't have the time. We don't have the energy. We don't have the resources. We need something we can eat on a regular basis to nourish our soul. And that's what these pathways offer us. So let me just wrap up with this, right? If your soul is hungry, head to the kitchen. Head to the kitchen. Some of you know exactly where to start. We've gone over things here even this morning. You're like, yeah, I knew that. I just need a little bit of a nudge. Some of you have baggage that you've brought along with you and experiences that you've had and places and things that you've been told that you've struggled and wrestled. I loved, I, I came across this book uh, recently called Ragged, Spiritual Help for the Spiritually Exhausted by a woman uh, named Gretchen uh, Ranekin, I think. Um, she makes this observation. Um, she says, do you feel guilty when you miss a day of Bible reading? Do you feel shame for how much you dread reading the Bible? We're not asking for shows of hands here. Do you have to bribe yourself to read the Bible? This is just one spiritual practice, right? Do you have to bribe yourself to read the Bible? Do you feel the need to keep pushing to the end of the chapter even when you have a question in the middle? Uh, when you don't understand the Bible, does it shake your faith? Are you intimidated by reading it on its, on its own without a devotional? Do you feel guilty if you don't get anything out of your Bible reading time? Have you ever listed Bible reading as a New Year's resolution and made it until numbers? Um, have you ever questioned, does it count? Was it enough? What if I don't understand? What am I getting out of it anyway? She goes on to add this. She says, Satan will call you a legalist when you try to regularly pray and read your Bible. And then he will call you a failure when you forget to do those things. Remember, we will never satisfy the accuser. So let me offer a place to begin. I know I'm running a little bit long here. Long-winded pastor, sorry. Um, my, uh, my wife and I subscribe to one of these meal-in-a-box things, right? And so um, every week or so, we get a box, and it's got all, everything in there. Like this is, so we, you know, we plan ahead. We're like, go online. It's like, okay, we're going to have this day and this day and this day. And so, so it's all right there, right? So I'm going to give you like a meal-in-a-box, okay? This is, this is, this is like, Simple ingredients. You can pick and choose what you want out of here. You can do what you want or not. Like, it's fine. But this is just um, a kind of a, a meal plan, a starter meal plan for your week. Okay? So um, I'm going to run through these briefly. Uh, every day of the week, we're going to do something. Sunday, today. Sunday is like celebrate or create something. Right? If you want to write it down somewhere, that's cool. But celebrate your creator by actually creating something or reveling in something he has already created. That's simple. That's a practice, right? That's a spiritual. Monday, pray, right? You can sit, you can stand, you can kneel, you can lie down, bring your whole self or as much as you're able. Pray the Lord's Prayer, make up a prayer, right? But talk with God, not just to God, but with God, okay? Do it for a minute, do it for an hour, do it in the morning or lunch or whenever it works for you. Just say, Monday, I'm going to pray. Tuesday, give. Because, right? Generosity, giving is a practice. Jesus says, when you give. It could be money. It could be something else of value. It could be your time. Give to the point where it feels like, oh, that actually cost me something. Wednesday, read. Read. Not a novel, not a graphic novel. Just read something out of Scripture. If you don't know where to start, start with the Gospel of Mark. 
right? But just read something. Maybe it's just for a few minutes. Maybe it's for an extended period of time. If you have the ability to do that, that's great, right? Thursday, reflect, meditate. Like maybe on what you just read on Wednesday, right? Or maybe something that God is impressing on you. Um, take something that you read and, and, and think about. What thoughts does that bring to mind? What memories? What, where does God nudging you? And what is he saying into your life and, and thinking about this? What emotions come to your mind? How does this un impact your understanding of who you are, of who God is, of your relationship to God and to your neighbors? And then Friday, fast. Yeah, I mean, fast from food, if you can do that. I mean, for some people, medically, that's not good. But in that moment, whether you fast for a meal or a couple of meals or whatever, like, let your kind of that appetite reminder remind you of your desire for soul food and remind you that your appetites are not the king of your life, that you have another king. And so just, again, to be in that space. Saturday, serve. Go out of your way to serve someone else. Maybe somebody that you wouldn't normally serve or somebody who doesn't deserve it. Do it, <laughs> do it without drawing attention to yourself. Like don't put it on social media. Don't tell anybody else about it and see what that secrecy does to you and what it reveals about what's going on in your heart. Okay, so these are basic. Like this, these are, these are peanut butter and jelly sandwich kind of things, right? This is simple, basic stuff. You can accomplish any one of these on any day. Um, it's easy to dismiss simple things, too. It's easy to say, oh, that just, that's it's so basic. It's so simple. Don't disparage the little things. Remember what Jesus said about faith, just this tiny little bit in Mark chapter 4? He said, what shall we say the kingdom of God is like, or what parable shall we use? It's like a mustard seed, which is the smallest of all seeds on earth, and yet when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all gardens with such big branches the birds can perch in its shade. Right? So, so these small, God can take these small things, these little practices, these basic ingredients, and can transform your life and your world. Understand, like, soul food, the the basic ingredients are available. They're simple. Jesus says, you know, whoever comes to me will never go hungry and never be thirsty. If, you're, if your soul deep down inside has a longing that hasn't been filled, Jesus says, you know, it doesn't have to be that way. Let these simple ingredients, let these practices these basic things that have been around for millennia that maybe, maybe you've tried them or maybe you've scoffed them or maybe you've, you know, struggled with them. Just say, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this back in. I'm going I'm to try again. The sugar, the flour, the eggs, the oil. Um, and I'm going to see what God does. And invite Him into that space in your life. Open the pantry door. Find some ingredients that work for you that fit into who God has made you and then allow God to show up the bread of life the living water let's pray together God thank you thank you that we can come to you when we've failed when we've struggled when we're um, far away when we're walking with you God no matter where we are we can turn and there you are and we can take these simple activities, these practices, these basic ingredients and pull them out of the pantry and put them together in a way that works for us, God, whether we're an intellectual type or contemplative or serving or whatever it happens to be. And God, that you will meet us in those places. God, give us eyes to see, ears to hear. We want to welcome you and then we want to sit at the banquet table that Jesus invites us to and nourish our souls. We pray this, God, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so we want to thank you for being here and checking us out online. Uh, before you go, though, uh, we want to let you know about a couple things that are coming up, some opportunities that you might want to take advantage of in the coming days and weeks and even months into December. So, Jeanette, welcome. Hello. Yes, yeah, some ways to engage in some spiritual practices, some of them serving, yeah. um, some of them maybe some ways you can fast and, and serve others. So yeah. here's a few of them, blood drive. Have any of you received a phone call from the Red Cross like asking to donate blood or am I the only one? Mm. Like, yeah, yeah. So it really struck me the other day, like never have they done that. So I think the, the shortage is serious. Like they're making calls to say, hey, will you come out and give blood? So um, I'm going to do it this time. 
I encourage you. I, last time I didn't, because I had one time where I had a bad experience, and then I was like, I don't know if I want to do that again. <laughs> Um, but you know what? I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back on. Um, just make sure you do eat. They're telling you the truth. You should eat before yeah. you give blood. Don't fast I, that day. Yeah, don't fast that day. I think that's, that's what I did wrong that one time. So I say all this to encourage you. Um, it may seem like a simple way, but it's a serious uh, mm -hmm. need in our community. So November 10th, we are doing another blood drive here, 1 to 6 p.m. You can go to our website or you can get on the app to sign up. Consider coming out if you're someone who can give blood. Uh, let your coworkers and your neighbors know anybody can participate. So uh, we want to do our part. That's one simple way that we can serve. Another is Thanksgiving. Tomorrow is November 1st. I can't believe it. Um, I'm already thinking about, okay, I'm going to do Thanksgiving at my house this year, and what does that mean? I'm going to get prepared so that it's not a stressor. I'm going to do it in advance. Mm -hmm. And for many families in our community, just the thought of Thanksgiving and needing to have extra money to provide a nice meal is an incredible stressor. Yeah. They don't know where they're going to get the money to maybe buy a turkey or a ham or chicken or whatever they serve. And so we want to be a church again that's giving back. Thanksgiving, our goal is to provide Thanksgiving meals for at least 200 families. And we're going to do that by providing gift cards. So if you are able to participate in that, if you're able to help provide Thanksgiving for someone, there's a couple of ways you can do it. You can buy a gift card in the increment of $25 or $50, and you can drop them off here any uh, Sunday over the next couple of weeks. You can drop them off during the week, 9 to 5. And uh, there's always someone in our office Monday, um, 9 to 5. You can drop them off here. Or you can go online. So if you go to our website to give, and then you'll want to check um, under the, the category Gaithersburg Cares Hub. So everything that comes in for November to Gaithersburg Cares Hub is going to be used to provide Thanksgiving meals for folks in our community. So our hope is to first provide for all those folks that have been visiting our pantry on a regular basis. And if we're able to get more than that, then we will uh, provide for additional folks in our community. Christmas choir. So as you think about Thanksgiving, you got to get ready for Christmas as well. If you have the gift of vocals, of singing, um, please come out and be a part of that. You can sign up again online or go to our app and there'll be several rehearsals in advance and then Christmas Eve, we uh, will have a, a fantastic Christmas choir and you can be a part of that. That's one of the ways you can celebrate and you can serve, you know, two of those spiritual practices at the same time. Worship might be one there you could say as well. And then last but not least, we are doing another Saturday Choice Pantry. We served more families than ever on our last Saturday Choice Pantry. And we realize it's because people who need a little bit of extra help to provide food, many of them have jobs. They are working very hard during the week. And so Saturday is a great day that we're able to serve a broader audience. But we do need your help. So we need folks that will be willing to assist shoppers, help us keep the shelves stocked. We need people that will welcome folks as they come. We need a few of you who are willing to pray. So last Saturday pantry, the end of our pantry, we just had a little station where folks, if they wanted prayer, no pressure, could stop and ask someone to pray for them. Overwhelmingly, the majority of the folks did say, yeah, if you'd be willing to pray for me, I have some things going on in my life. I'd love to see God show up. And so we need folks that would be willing to, to just stand and love our neighbors and to just go before God in prayer as well. So uh, if you are willing to be a part of that, again, go to our website. You can click on um, the Gaithersburg Cares Hub, and you can find a sign-up right there at the, the volunteers um, sign-up sheet. Or you can go to the app. And there, there will be a form where you can sign up for that pantry. If you do go to the Gaithersburg Cares Hub page, what you're going to want to do is scroll down until you see November 6th, the open pantry, and you'll see all the signups there for that on that Saturday. So that's, that's yeah, it. Yeah. That fits in with serving on Saturday for the, the meal plan. Oh, it for the does. Week, right? Thank you. Yeah. You set it up right there for us. See, yeah. Pastor Mark said Saturday is served. What do you know? Come yeah. on out. Anyway, Next thank, you, thank you for those of you who have been giving financially, regularly, consistently, generously, sacrificially. Uh, those of you online, I know many of you are part of that team. 
Uh, if you want to be a part of that, if you want to help make sure that these kind of ministries that you've been hearing about are continuing to go forward, uh, feel free to jump on board. Uh, go to the app, go to the webpage, or text Seneca Give, two words, to 77977. Uh, and we appreciate all of you who are able uh, to practice generosity uh, in a way that helps move the kingdom of God forward in this community and beyond. Uh, and those of you watching online, uh, just thank you for checking us out. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, please do that. And uh, remember, those of you online and in the room, uh, next week you get an hour of sleep back. So, um, you know, you'll be even more wide awake by the time we start next week uh, at 10 o'clock. So uh, thanks for checking us out online, and we hope to see you next week.